Hello friends, I will be taking you through six colorful, fun and festive designs. Let's get into it. A full list of supplies is in the description below. We'll be starting off with a 2H pencil. If you have one of those, it'll leave just a very light mark on your paper so that you can create a light outline to guide your painting. And then we'll go in there with some color. So we're starting off with a very vibrant red. Pick the brightest red in your palette, and you're going to paint alternating sized circles all throughout your tree. Next, you will create a pink color using some white and mixing it into the red that you were using previously. And this will keep your painting in the same color family, but will tone down the intensity just a little bit. You'll do the same thing here. Scatter a mix of large dots and then smaller dots throughout your entire painting. I'm using a small brush here. I'm using a size two. This is the Princeton Snap Brush, and it is a round brush, and it has a very fine tapered point so that you can get in and make all those little itsy bitsy circles. So pull out your smallest brush and use it for this painting. Then we're going to make purple. This is really easy. You'll just take a 50-50 mix of red and blue, mix that together. It will give you a really rich, vibrant, deep purple. And this will lighten up a little bit as it dries, so don't be worried if it looks a little darker than you're expecting to start off with. Watercolor always lightens up a bit when it dries. You'll scatter dots throughout your entire painting. You probably won't have such large circles at this point since you're filling in your tree, but you should have a mix of medium and small. The idea here is to create a really festive looking tree. We want this chock full of ornaments, anything you can possibly find you have put on this tree and it is just gorgeous and bright and happy. We will make a special tree topper for this one. So using a golden yellow, create three small dots at the top of your painting. Once that layer is completely dry, you can erase your pencil line and then we'll come back in and start filling in the tree. So this will be small green dashes placed throughout the tree. And we're going to be using different greens to vary the look of this and it'll give it some really beautiful dimension. So you want to start off with any green of your choosing. And then once you've laid down some of that, take a darker green and dip it into some of the green branches that are still wet it'll absorb some of that darker paint and it will spread it out as it dries and it'll give you a really nice effect. This is a really beautiful, easy way to get variation in your greens and to really take advantage of the beauty of watercolor, which is the mixing and mingling that happens, all that magic that happens with the water. As you work down your tree, make sure you're working in and around all of those ornaments that you placed and then go back through and create some little needles along the sides so that you get the effect of branches extending out past those ornaments.
Once you have filled in all those spaces, take a medium green and just add a little bit of a trunk here. These will be small little dashes, just the suggestion of the bottom of the tree. And then we will go into our next one. So you'll start off with a very faint pencil outline and then take some water. We're going to use a wet on wet technique here. So you will basically create the shape of a tree as you're working your way down. As you can tell, this doesn't need to be precise at all. You're basically just staying within the outline that you created, leave some dry spaces on the paper, and then fill in the rest with water. And then you'll start dropping in different colors of green. So I've started off with a lighter green on the top of this tree and then have come in with a much darker green along the side. And then I'm making more of a green blue over on the right. When you take the paint on your paintbrush and touch the water that you laid down, it'll immediately grab that paint and start spreading it and blending it and soaking it into the paper. So this creates a really gorgeous effect. You can even add a little bit of yellow in here just for a little bit of variety and a little bit of turquoise blue. Using 100% cotton paper here will be a game changer for you because it absorbs the water beautifully and allows those pigments to mix together. This might be my favorite tree in the whole video. You'll fill out that entire outline and then once that is completely dry, go back through and erase any pencil lines that are still showing. Take a light green and add a bit of a trunk. And then choose a bright blue and add some garland to the tree. You'll do this by just lightly dotting it over the surface. Start with smaller dots at the top of your tree and then they'll become slightly larger as you work your way down the tree. You want the previous layer to be dry at this point so that the garland and the ornaments stay defined. Now you'll rinse your brush off and we'll pick up some more of that golden yellow and we'll start placing ornaments through the tree here. These will be a little bit on the smaller side because the emphasis of this painting is going to be on the beautiful melding of the colors in the tree itself. So the ornaments are really just fun little accents. Once you've completed the yellow, rinse your brush and then choose a brighter reddish orange and you will place those through the tree as well. This will contrast really nicely with the cool colors that we used throughout most of this painting and gives it a nice vibrant pop. The next tree will be a really beautiful blue. So you'll place your outline and start with some upward swooshes. If your paintbrush skips over the paper like it was doing right there, just add a little bit more water to your brush, go over that section again and it'll smooth it right out. And then continue with this kind of flared flicking motion as you work your way down the tree. When you start at the center of the tree and then swipe your brush out, it'll create this really nice wispy effect on the end. And you can do that all the way through both sides of the tree. If you find the angle a little harder on one side, for me, this is a little harder to do on the left side of the tree. You can rotate your paper to give yourself a better angle on it. You can see that I'm pulling from the same blue here, that really bright blue in the top left. And depending on how much water you have on the brush, that will determine how light or dark the value of the color is when you lay it down on the paper. It's great to have a variety in here. You can see that there's a mix of both throughout the entire tree. So this not only gives you a beautiful visual effect, but it also gives you an idea of how your paint reacts to more or less water on your brush. Now you'll take a very deep dark blue and fill in some ornaments throughout the tree. Again, this will be a mix of small, medium, and large ornaments placed all throughout the tree. We're going to concentrate just on blue here. So feel free to use any blue you like that you have in your palette. And after you have finished scattering ornaments throughout the tree, don't forget some at the top here and then along the sides. We're going to add that three dot topping to this tree. After that dries down completely, you can come back in with your eraser 
and erase any of those pencil marks that are still showing along each side of the tree. And then we'll add a little bit of a trunk. So you'll come back in with your blue, create some vertical dashed lines with your paintbrush, and then some horizontal ones to stand it on the ground. On to our next one, create that outline. And then turning your page to the side will probably make this a bit easier. If you're left-handed, you would flip your paper the opposite way of this. And we're basically creating little raindrop shapes. So use a round brush for this and you'll press the belly of the brush into the paper to start and then lift it up and let the point of the brush create that taper at the very end. You'll use a variety of greens for this and as you can see here I have two greens in my palette on the bottom right and I'm just using some of those straight out of the pan and then for other little raindrop shapes I'm mixing a bit more of the darker one, a bit more of the lighter one, and working my way throughout this tree. Doing that with your palette will give you a really nice variety from light to dark values on your tree and it'll make it really visually interesting. So you're going over the entire tree shape with these drop shapes. And then once you've done that, we're going to let that dry completely, erase those pencil lines, and then we're going to come back in with a really deep, rich, saturated red. I'm pulling straight out of the pan here and I'm using the number two brush, just the very tip, the very point of it, and place very small red dots throughout the entire tree here. This will look so beautiful when you're done with it. Place a little teeny tiny one at the very top as the topper. This tree is really a fun one if you like a more classic look to your Christmas trees. And the beauty of this one is really in those raindrop shapes with all the varieties of green. For the trunk on this one, we will be in keeping with the natural look and use some brown, create some vertical dashed lines, and you're set. Create your next outlines. For this one, we're going to do multiple trees. And on the first layer, you're going to create three narrow trees. You'll see them a bit better here as I paint them, so you might want to wait until you see this kind of come together. It's a little tough to see that pencil outline. But we're basically creating three narrow trees for this first layer. And we're going to start off with a green and then you'll take a clean paper towel and just dab it into that wet paint. When you dab it down the first time, make sure that you rearrange that paper towel so that you've got a clean section and then dab that down again into the paint. It'll pick up a bit of that pigment and give you a bit more of a blotted look to the tree. We'll do that same one with this lighter green. It's a little more subtle on that one. And then we're going to mix up a purple. So again, this is a 50-50 mix of the red and the blue. And then we'll go in with that purple and start laying that down. You can keep the bottoms of these trees pretty uneven. And you always wanna be working with a wet edge. So you'll be working from one side of the tree to the other as you lay down that paint and then come back in with your paper towel and blot that one as well. You want to rearrange the paper towel each time you blot it so that you're laying down a clean section and not blotting wet paint onto the white pieces of the paper. After that dries completely, you'll come back in and do another set of three trees. And we're going to do a pale pink for this first one. So you'll do a mix of the white and the red, and this will look transparent. So you're still going to see the trees in the background showing through this upper layer. And you'll create that same tree shape. This one might be a little bit wider just so that you're covering the distance between those two trees in the background. Go ahead and blot that. And then take some of your blue. You can mix it with a little bit of green like I'm doing here 
and then we'll start laying that down. That'll give you a really nice jewel tone. This will be the most intense looking tree of the bunch. And keep that bottom nice and organic looking. It'll be a little bit uneven. And fill in that tree. I'm not using all that much water on my brush right here so that I can get a more intense look from this color. Less water on your brush will mean that the pigment stands out a bit more like you're seeing here. And then blot that one. And then we're going to go over to our last tree over on the right side. And we're going to mix up more of a sheer green color for this one. So I'm picking up a little bit of the blue green and then some of that yellow based green mixing about a 50 50 mix of those two and then start laying that down in that last tree over on the right side. Once you've completed that, you'll take your brown and we're going to start adding trunks to these trees. So you'll do little vertical motions to create the trunks. And once you do that for each of the trees, come back through and make more of a horizontal motion with just a little bit of water on your brush and that will draw down some of that brown pigment and create the look of ground. Keeping water on your brush will keep that a little bit more faint than the trunks, which is what we want. Keep it really subtle. And then on to the next painting. This is our last one. You'll draw the outline for the tree and then you're going to start off with a light green. I'm using a yellow based green here. You can use any green you like, just keep it on the lighter side because we'll be coming back through with a darker shade in a little bit. And then you'll work down this tree in bands and you'll see me doing that here. So each band is separated by a little bit of white space and then you want to create the bands with little flicks of your brush and create kind of an upward motion to those dashes. And as you work down into the larger segment of the tree, make sure that you're angling them up and out on the edges. Take that same light green and create a little bit of a trunk. Keep this pretty faint. It doesn't need to be super defined. Just work down the center of the tree. And then pick up a bit of that brown and place that in the center. The brown can be a little bit deeper in this stage because we're going to be adding some deeper green and it'll match the value of that. It'll match the intensity. Now you'll work back over the tree again using a darker green. I'm using a blue based green right here. And you'll go over the same bands of the tree, but keep it just inside the lighter green. That way you'll have a bit of the lighter green peeking through on the top and bottom of each band and on the sides. Next, you'll add a star, so pick up some of your golden yellow and you'll go in with a point at the top, create a horizontal line, and then two little downward legs on that star. And then we're going to add yellow ornaments. And we're going to place the ornaments for this tree in between each of the bands where you left that white space. So these will be small little dots just floating and looking beautiful. You'll work your way down with that yellow and then do the same thing followed by a red and then a brilliant blue. And be sure to rinse your brush thoroughly between each color change.
now you have a set of six beautiful watercolor cards that you can be proud of. You can use this in any way you see fit to give with gifts or even give as a gift if you want to give a set to someone. My name is Sarah. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.